So I'm Sam Murphy with Biopharma Capital. I'm here with Avery Posey, instructor from University of Pennsylvania. And we're going to be talking primarily about his work in uh, car therapies and next generation approaches involving glycoproteins combined with protein targets for uh, tumor targeting. And so Avery, maybe you could talk a bit about your work? Sure. Um, so we developed a uh, car um, as, our, uh, as a first of a platform that we hope to develop of new cars that targets a truncated O-glycan on a protein called MUC1. Mm -hmm. uh, MUC1 is found on most tumors upregulated. It's upregulated on most tumor cells. Also, the polarity is, uh, is changed. So MUC1 is a very interesting target for new cancer therapies. However, MUC1 is also found on normal tissue. Mm -hmm. um, but there seems to be a difference in cancer cells and their O-glycosylation of MUC1 um, where there's a truncated glycan that's found on the cancer cells that's not found in normal cells. So we use an antibody that was developed at the University of Copenhagen uh, as a car on our T cells, and that antibody can detect the cancer-specific version of MUC1, but not the normal version. Uh, and so those T cells are now the first set of T cells that can target a solid tumor in a cancer-specific way. Okay. So does the, the single chain target just the glycosylation uh, that's unique to the cancer cells, or does it also target the MUC1 itself? So the, the SCFV, or the single chain, uh, only targets the uh, combination of the truncated glycan and MUC1. So it doesn't target MUC1 without any glycosylation, and it doesn't target, target MUC1 with full glycosylation. And is there a reason why it's better to target both the protein and the glycan as opposed to just the glycan? So, so this is our platform, um, and, and it's a good test for both safety and um, targetability. Um, we now hope to move forward into other um, methods of targeting truncated glycans. Uh, we're, we're interested in whether or not um, just the truncated glycan itself on any glycoprotein is a safe target. Um, we're not sure of that yet uh, because our methods of, of determining whether an antigen is present or not present um, seems to be binary based on IHC or immunohistochemistry. Uh, and that's that um, goes down to our, our level of detection of that, our sensitivity, is basically our eyes through a microscope. Um, but T cells have increased sensitivity beyond what our eyes can see. Mm -hmm. And so, so their binary is whether or not they can kill or not kill a cell. And just the presence of a few molecules in a cell, which we can't see through the microscope, uh, is enough for a T cell to kill that cell. Um, so it, so right. we, we want to move beyond um, our standard laboratory techniques of identifying whether um, there's a, th whether we can see enough of an antigen to determine present or not present, and to whether a T cell can see this with an antibody on the surface that's specific to it. it. Uh, and we know that the sensitivity is, is much different. And is, is it a single binding surface that is simultaneously connecting with both the protein and the glycan? Is there a single binding Or is it a one affinity, uh, one binding surface binding to the protein and one binding surface binding to the glycan? Uh, so, so it's one antibody, it's one um, antibody that binds to both the combination of that glycan on the presence of that protein backbone. So potentially you could use the two-signal approach and, and use a second antibody to confer even more specificity. A absolutely. Um, and, Is and that a direction you plan to go? No. <laughs> <laughs> so, so other groups are definitely working on the two-signal approach um, to develop more specificity for CAR T-cells, increased safety. Um, we, I think that um, this combination of cancer-specific glycan and protein backbone is enough um, for safety, and we, we definitely want to test that in a phase one clinical trial, so that's the next step for okay, us. Okay, great. I, I mean, on that note, how, how collegiate and cordial is the um, kind of collaboration environment at the academic level when it comes to pairing different next-generation approaches in car technology? Um, in terms of are people collaborating nicely or is there a lot of kind of siloed individual lab research being undertaken so so at the intra institutional level it's very collegiate at the inter uh, institutional level there are groups that are uh, separate and um, they are all colleagues um, we, we all present our data at, at meetings um, but there, there's less collaboration between them so, so there are now um, new um, organizations that are trying to bridge that gap to, to 
make other institutions work together. Uh, and that's, that's the way that we're going to move forward in, in terms of immuno-oncology. Ah, great. And how have you found this meeting so far, uh, where um, you've been able to share your, your story with uh, people from a diverse set of backgrounds? Yeah, I think that that's, um, has been a great opportunity for me to, to share uh, what, what I do in academia with um, groups from industry um, and, and reach out to, to ask for partnerships um, in, in areas that we could use a little help um, and, and show them what we can do as well. So Avery, thanks so much for taking the time to, to be interviewed and hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you for having me.